got an interesting question that came in on the site. I have a 1988 Winnebago Super Chief, 31 foot, and would like to improve the handling, especially during windy driving. I thought of replacing the shocks, rear airbags, which do not hold air, and sway bar. Do you have any recommendations? What would you start with? Where should I shop? I can do some of it myself. I'm a beginner, mechanically inclined. Would having an alignment uh, help? Um, the tires are in good shape, and it's rich. This is a pretty common problem with the older chassis. I, I spent five years on the road um, driving mostly P30 chassis, which this one uh, would have on it. And uh, it, it, was, it was basically a one chassis for about everything that was out there. And it was a little bit like elephant on roller, roller skates. The number one thing that you need to do, you remember you're driving down the road with a billboard pretty much. So anytime you come under an underpass and, and you have no wind there, but then you come out of wind, it's going to affect that sidewall. So you, you need to check all the components on your chassis. Make sure everything is up to specifications. So the first thing that I would suggest on a unit that's that old is go get the coach weighed. You really need to make sure you stay under the gross vehicle weight rating, which is the GVWR. That's what the chassis manufacturer says. This is the maximum weight that this vehicle can, can weigh going down the road with all your propane and your gas and your water and your stuff inside of it. Don't go over G GVWR. The next thing you're gonna look at is GAWR, which is gross axle weight rating. Do I have too much weight on the front end? Do I have too much weight on the back end? You know, the, the heavier the vehicle, the more it's gonna move around, the more the tires are going to kind of be a little mushy uh, going down the road as well. So go to a CAT scale. Uh, you'll find them at just about every Flying J. Uh, pilot. If you go to catscale.com, you'll see one in your area. And for $10, you put it on that scale, put the front wheels on the front pad, the back wheels on the second pad, so I know gross vehicle weight rating overall that I'm not over, and I also know that I'm not over on one component. Now that P30 chassis had a pretty light front end, so I would start by looking at that. I may have to move some stuff. You know, one of the things that owners don't, rec um, don't understand is that just because I have all this storage capacity underneath doesn't mean I can fill it to the brim. I have to know my weight ratings. So check that out first. The next thing is that P30 had a A-frame su front suspension, it was called. It had two coil springs at each of the wheels rather than today's I-beam that you see on the, on the workhorse, Fords, so forth. Inside those coil springs, there were airbags and pretty notorious for those airbags to, to get pinched, deflate, and pretty much become worthless. Uh, you need to crawl in underneath those, take a look at those airbags, pump them up. If they don't hold air, I would replace them. Now he also recommended, or said that he had airbags on the backside. Now this happens to be a, a 96 Monaco, and Monaco's have great rides if their airbags are all filled up. They have eight airbags. They have two sets on each wheel versus one set on some of the other ones. Now on that 90, or that 88 he just talked about, the airbags on the back would have probably been an optional airbag from either 3T or, or uh, could even have been um, Jet Company out of, out of Humboldt. Those airbags are not um, holding air, I would replace them. The next thing I would look at is the shocks, in, in the front especially. Um, if those shocks are starting to get weak, they're starting to bend, I may even upgrade those to Bilstein shocks, the newer models that, that are out today. I wouldn't go out and look at a chassis suspension system until I made sure every one of those components are up to specification. Now if you still have some handling issues at that point, then you might want to look at somebody like Roadmaster who has a suspension sway bar um, that would go up on, on the other side of it. One last thing to look at is your tires. Now this is something that people take for granted. You need proper tire inflation. Um, you know, bef before, and I would get an alignment. He did bring that up too. I would say, because once you get your coach, most manufacturers will align the coach at the factory. But once you get the coach and you put all your stuff inside of it and it has a chance to settle a little bit, that alignment's gonna be, uh, will need to be redone. So get those aligned, but make sure you check your tire pressure on a regular basis. And the only way to find proper tire inflation, it's not what's stamped on the side, that's maximum pressure at maximum weight. Once you weigh that vehicle we talked about beforehand, go to the tire chart. If you go to rvsafety.com, you can go to tire chart for just about every tire on the market. Find your tire, the size, dual or single application, and what is the pressure. If I have 
too much inflation in there, if I've loaded that up to the maximum, what it, if it says 90, 120, whatever it happens to be, and I don't have full weight in that, I'm, I'm going to balloon that tire up and I'm not going to have enough tread. And that's going to affect my handling as well. I want the maximum tread. So check your, all your chassis components, get the proper tire inflation, and make sure you're not overweight. And it should make a big difference in the handling of your RV.